Hey folks, Quillitian here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Football Manager 2017. We are playing as Air United, and we've got five matches left before the end of the season. We are not technically mathematically guaranteed yet to get into the playoffs, although um, it would be incredibly unlikely for that to not happen. As such, this game, we are going to be starting some of our second stringers to get them a little bit more match sharpness, such that in the playoffs, um, hopefully we will have... Um, a bit more of an option of backup players should something go terribly, terribly wrong. We are playing at home today against Queen of the South, and hopefully things will go okay. Normally, I think I would go in a control mentality here, but because we're not playing all of our best players nor all of our sharpest players, we will um, just keep to a standard mentality over here. I'm not going to go all the way back to, like, a counter or anything. Um, still a decent amount of confidence, especially up front. Fitness test, Ross Darkity is fine. That is good to know, especially going into everything else. Um, we have won against Queen of the South all three times we have met up with them so far, which is quite surprising. Also, they are playing an actually different structure. They have not been playing a 4-4-2, which is kind of interesting. Instead, they're playing, uh, I guess you'd call that a 4-1-2... I'm not actually... You might call that a 4-3... 2-1. I bet you they'd, they'd call it something like that with the DM in there, the defensive midfielder. Um, so quite a defensive mentality over here. Might make it a little tricky to, to score. Um, this referee seems to be relatively chill with the yellow cards, actually, so that'll be interesting to see how it goes. Very good pitch. A little bit of a breeze, which might make it harder for our very long aerial shots to get delivered, but I think I'm relatively confident in here. Um, I don't think I need to make any changes at this point. We've got Jordan Hart in here. He's won two games in a row uh, with some very excellent performance, so I'm going to go ahead and keep him in there for now anyway. Um, he's someone who could get a little bit more actual experience. His stats are going down which is a damn shame, possibly because he hasn't been playing that much. Also, I believe he is a part-timer as well. Um, but hopefully we can get him to develop a little bit more and see how it goes. Is he wanted by another club? He is. And Michael Rose is wanted by quite a few clubs. He is uh, transfer listed, so maybe he'll get picked up next time around. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Nicky Devlin is banned for this match. Yes, he is. So let's go ahead and remove him from the substitute list. And instead, we will pull in um, Robbie Crawford, who's actually a very strong player and could use a little bit of sharpness as well. Maybe we'll substitute him in. Um, yes, we will proceed to the match, even though they don't have the sharpness. So we're going to expect a few more mistakes and maybe a little bit less overall speed going on here. Um, I'm hoping that people don't go into this complacent. We are on a three-match uh, unbeaten run. I think one of those is a draw, though. Um, slight favorites. Um, and, you know, it's a lower rank thing. So you've sprung a few surprises in your team selection today. What's the thinking behind that? We... It's about using the squad in a balanced fashion. That's what it's about. Your airside can book their tickets to the playoffs should everything fall into place. How comfortable are you with having shown up uh, with plate at full time? Um, half, half. Um... If it happens today, then so be it, but it's not something we spent a lot of time. Yeah, because we're not we're not sitting here thinking that, ah, yes, this is going to be the win. Here's how we close things out. It's actually not our plan today. Uh, left Derek, Gary Harkins out. Um, fantastic depth. He's just being rested. That's all. Um, it's unfair to single out individuals. Oh, my God. How many questions are we doing here? Can we expect an attacking focus for your team this match? Um, not prepared to discuss that in a press conference. Sorry. I know that's a bit dull, but there it is. So they are going to call it. Yeah. 4-1-4-1-2-3. That's actually how they called it. I wasn't sure if they were going to call this as a 4-3-2-1, but apparently not. DM wide. Okay. So um, certainly what we're going to do here is we're going to tightly mark you. And I think both attacking guys is going to be the dealio here. Okay, that's going to be fine. Um, let them know they played well as late. We're going to be, like, cautious. Um, good main run lately, so go out there and impress me. Okay, not going to put too much pressure as is. I am a little worried about, you know, we're going to run a lot of second stringers. And again, some of them aren't even second stringers. They're just people who haven't played for a while because of injuries and are lacking some amount of sharpness. Uh, Doc, Ross Doherty is a good example of that. Fantastic player for our team, but um, has been sitting out for a long time due to injuries. And it would be great to have him back in a proper rotation. Big pass to Forrest. It does get overshot. Who, who was that that was doing that? Jamie Adams. Uh, Jamie Adams, another good player for us, lacking a little bit in sharpness because he hasn't played too much. But hopefully we will be okay. That goes way over the net. Not a threat in the least, but, you know, 1 minute 30 in, and we've already given up a free kick. That's a little disappointing. Pass completion's been pretty good so far. Alan Forrest, of course, loses the header. He is, like, super-duper short. I think he's, like, 5'7", 5'8", something like that. But he can book in real life. 
Mark Hamill over there taking a break from playing uh, playing his uh, stars, his his role in various movies to come and uh, defend a header there. Moore gets nice and wide to, to Forrest, who does a great cross to McGuffey, who does get a header more or less on target. Hard angle to do it from, and headers are always going to be quite difficult in terms of accuracy, especially at the level of uh, play that we're at here. I mean, again, this is not like English football, premier football is what I meant to say. Um, thanks, Jacobs. <laughs> uh, let, let's watch the replay of that again. I actually got, thought I got scored on for a second there because I'm pretty sure it was an own goal from Jacob's header. So Paul Kearney comes in with the corner um, and it looks like it was defended by... Who are we playing against again? Queen of the South. It was defended, but Ross Doherty here gets over and does sort of like a backwards far side sweeping kick. That's not a very easy kick to get a lot of power in because you're really just bringing your leg inward as opposed to kicking it forward. Those muscles are not as strong, but he gets it all the way across to McGuffey who heads it towards the goal. And right here, I think it's going to be Jacob's head. Because I think I, I, I'd have to replay the angle one more time. I think that was going to go wide or at the very least the goalkeeper was clearly on top of it. So that's Jacob who, uh, who heads it right in there. I don't know if that's going to count as an own goal. Um, because it wasn't kicked the same way. It was just sort of physically deflected. Um, need to keep possession. I'm not worried about that right now. First of all, it's 50-50, and it's super early. So McGuffey... Oh, that's an... I don't think I've ever seen, like... I'm surprised he was sending it back to Boyle there, but a, a perfectly fine attempt. Pulls the defender way out of position. McGuffey has got all the space in the world to line up a pass or a shot. He does pass it over to Ross Doherty, who actually... I. You know, I think that was going to go a little wide anyway, but I got to say that was a very, very nice attempt and could have easily resulted in a goal. And Ross, a very good player. He's only sitting at like 59% um, sharpness or something like that because he's been out for so long. And it is nice to see him come back with some real attempts at this point. I mean, maybe with more sharpness that would have gone in. I don't know. Adams keeps the ball in the offensive line, but no, it does get kicked out. But our defenders are there to keep it. Thorburn with a big forward pass. Doesn't go anywhere, but Doherty's able to keep it in. So we're still on the offense. Feeling really good about that. Murphy to Doherty. Doherty's got a nice, I was going to say, Adams nice wide open. Who's easily going to be able to get it more. Moore. is going to be pressured. He's not going to be able to make a play, but he does advance it to Doherty. Then to McGuffey, who's really pinned down. He's going to have, oh, nice footwork. Oh my God, beautiful. I can't believe that McGuffey kept the ball that long and got off such a beautiful, high quality pass. I, I mean, uh, kudos to Paul Kearney for being in position. And getting the the shot off, but it's McGuffey's footwork here, which really impressed me. Really impressed me. I think it may have actually been, it may have actually hit his body as well a bit too, but Paul Kearney still in position and delivers it. Beautiful play. We are 19 minutes into the first half, and we're up 2-0. And again, this was a team, you know, this squad here, I was not sure was going to be able to deliver the goods because... Again, just sort of rustiness. There are people that deserve to be played. I should probably work harder to um, cycle in one more, like, low sharpness person every game. I do try to do that sometimes with the substitutes, but not always. And just try to, to really do try to, to um, hey, how would you say it? Cycle? Reserve? Second team? B team? Not exactly. Like, um, there's a word for it. It's something like cycle. Rotate! Try to rotate in people with uh, lower sharpness, at least one or two every match. Um, and ideally, if you do it right, then you're, you're, there's still, you know, the low sharpness are going to be maybe 80%. And that would be ideal instead of what's going on here with people, you know, down in the 50s even, I think. Horse gets it back to Adams. Adam, oh, I'm surprised you went to the flank because there were a couple of people like Paul Kearney was in the middle there, as well as Ross Doherty, but now it's back there. Doherty over to Forrest. Forrest is definitely not going to be able to make a move. Gets it back to Adam Doherty, but we are, oh, consistently pulling a lot of people over here. I thought that was gonna, again going to go to the middle, but I can't complain about getting it over to, uh, to Rose, who's able to run it right up the line and a cross, a very dangerous cross into the middle. Looks like McGuffey's going to make a play for it. It does not go in, but good effort nonetheless. Crosses like that are one of the most dangerous things frequently in Football Manager. Um, it's less now. I think uh, in Football Manager 2015, I think even in the first half of 2016, crosses were in insanely dangerous. The AI had an incredibly difficult time defending against it, so it tended to be the, the winning way was just to like play a very cross-heavy, super-wide game. 
Um, but that did get adjusted, I think, through a patch about midway through the Football Manager 2016 era. Um, so crosses are less insanely broken, although still extremely strong, just as in real life. Crosses like that do tend to uh, provide a lot of scoring opportunities. I'm surprised we weren't able to take the ball away there. And in fact, they continue to be on the offense. This... Hart with a beautiful, beautiful defense there. I mean, admittedly, the shot was a little bit directly on him, but, um, you know, still very consistent. Jordan Hart playing fantastic football for us. This doesn't lead to a cross there, but it's too deep, and Hart's just able to pick it up with his hands. And we are once again finding ourselves on the offense. Craig Moore offside here. 32 minutes in, we've got a 2-0 lead. Uh, the shots are pretty even, though, I've got to say. And there have definitely been some dangerous opportunities there. It could easily be a 2-1 game. Hell, even then, that could have been a 2-1 right there. In fact, it's very easy to imagine this being a 2-2 game. Hell, or one of the goals, again, we don't necessarily um, merit. Uh, Moore fumbles a little bit with the ball there, but there's not enough threats around. Beautiful backwards pass to Alan Forrest. Ooh, who does lose it before he can continue the play. That's actually very disappointing, but Jamie Adams coming in with a beautiful tackle. Again, Alan Forrest actually beats the defender there. Beautiful play, then gets tackled away, but I have to say, that was a really, really nice run. I'm worried that Alan Forrest is holding onto the ball a little longer than uh, need be, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Again, I think Alan Force was stronger in Football Manager 2016. I think they nerfed his stats a little bit um, for um, 2017. Maybe his, I was going to say his real-life performance maybe wasn't as good um, statistically, but I mean, that was the season that real-life Air United did get promoted to the Championship League, so it's hard to imagine that Alan Force played very poorly. So I'm not sure. Um, yeah, everything we say now may, might overcomplicate things, so maybe we won't say nothing, anything. Michael Rose, his morale is not fantastic. He's looking a little nervous. I feel like, oh, why can't I make an individual talk at this point? Do I have to make a team talk first? I think there's one of these where, like, I can basically, you know, I'll just be calm. I've got nothing specific to say. You know what to do right now. There we go. Now I can do an individual one. Why wow, you're looking nervous. How do we make you not nervous? Um... calm you know no pressure on you today there you go relax a little bit you're fine looks motivated looks com uh, uh, confident no one is um is being complacent which is nice you know it'd be nice to get peter murphy's mood a little higher up too um you're you're operating a 6.9 you know a lot more to come from you there you go listen keenly okay if you were at a 7, I would have said I'm happy with your performance. But since you're not crossing into the 7, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. Especially in a home game. The game says, you know, be a little bit more free with your praise during away games because the performance expectation is not quite as high. So it's more reasonable for you to say you did a good job. Um, that was very interesting. Not really a tackle. I was worried we were going to pull too many people out of position and the pass would complete. But apparently we did intercept that pass. Here we are on the offense. Forrest actually does get the ball taken away from him. Doherty is going to lose that race. He pulls back just to cover one of the passing targets and lets, I don't know who this is, number six, Peter Murphy, um, handle uh, harassing the defender. And oh my god. I mean, luckily, Peter Murphy was right on there, which it would impinge the quality of that pass a little bit and maybe made it that much harder to score. But that was very, very dangerous. Again, it feels like it's a couple of games in a row. Uh, yeah, actually, here we are. We're legitimately being outshot again outshot again but we are still um uh ahead on goal and a beautiful long distance goal there from mcguffey it may have to do with the fact that uh, our opposition might be taking too many long range shots and our defenders might be doing a good job like we're allowing a lot of shots but they're not necessarily high quality shots so here's paracone gets to mcguffey he's outside of the the box i don't know what you would call that box area huge long range shot perfect upper right corner that is really 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 nice shot all right well we're up three in nil um still a lot of football left to play but it's hard to imagine us losing the match at this point um is there any changes we want to make probably not i mean i don't think we need to go more defensive i don't think we need to go more aggressive either we might be able to get more points in but um you know maybe not be nice to walk away with a clean sheet just you know keep the morale quite high here um, and we, again, we've given up enough shots on, so it's entirely possible. We're actually losing the possession game. We could go and, and try to switch to like, okay, you know, lower tempo, hold more position possession. Um, this might be, since we're so far ahead, is there someone else we might want to sub in? Robbie Crawford here with his 81%. I'd really like him to get a little bit of play here. So we're going to be looking at subbing one of the ones in the middle. Um, would you prefer... So two and a half stars, decent amount of uh, readiness there. 
um, two and a half stars, decent amount. So it looks like he'd be equally comfortable in either one of these roles. Um, then I'm going to leave Ross Doherty on here so we can get more sharpness and sub out Jamie Adams for Robbie Crawford. There we go. Again, this will probably result in a slightly weaker composition, but um, a better way for us to build more match sharpness because it'll give uh, Ross Doherty a little bit more time on the pitch. Paul Kearney getting a little bit tired here. He's been working really hard for us. I'm not going to sub him quite yet. Um, yeah, all right, confirm. Boom. We might end up... And I feel bad for Jordan Hart. This is an opportunity for him to walk away with another clean sheet over here and really, really impress. Um, and we are making life a little harder for him by... You know, oh my gosh, as a foul, is that going to lead to a penalty? I mean, Craig Moore did hold on to that ball a long time, and I'm surprised it didn't just get tackled away. We got lucky with the fact that it was not a clean tackle. It is, it is McGuffey. Craig McGuffey is going to be taking this penalty here. I don't know how, like, how frequent it is to, like, do this. It feels like in a regular football match, oh, he fails to get that in. It's not a 4-0 game yet. It feels like in a regular match, you would have given the penalty to the person who actually got fouled there. Maybe out of, you know, courtesy or something like that rather than, especially because, like, you don't have the same sort of numeric stats on who's best at taking penalties or who's best at finishing or anything. Um, I'm actually surprised Craig Moore didn't rank higher. I didn't go and manually tune the penalty takers. There may be something going on there. I'm not sure. All right, substitutions coming in from the other side. I should probably just take a look at the opposition instructions to see. Yeah, there we go. Striker, always. Um... Kalem tapping that's in the middle. Yeah, okay. That's going to be fine enough for now then. More. A couple of tackles from the opposition. Oh, this Miller guy is getting quite tired, but still seems to be successfully uh, making some tackles, running the ball. Good pass there. Clark's getting pretty heavily uh, pressured, but he does get it out to Pickard, who gets it out to Kalem tapping there, who just gave the opposition instructions for, but it hasn't kicked in yet. Not that it mattered here. Jacobs is going to be able to lay out a long-range shot, but we actually had a good angle of cover over there. I think there would have been a lot of bodies in the way had it been a little bit more accurate, so he had to try to go wide to the right and didn't quite work out. That penalty kick is going a million miles above the net. Okay, we should probably do a few more substitutes just for energy levels at this point. Um, so let's bring in Gary Harkins here, just to make sure he actually doesn't um, start to drop off, actually. That's not a bad idea. Um, Jamie Adams was subbed out. Everyone else has got, like, perfect condition. Um, Craig Moore's maxed out at this point, so I'm wondering about just subbing him out just for whatever. Um, but I don't know, maybe we can get a clean sheet. Let's bring in, uh, let's bring in Daryl McGatt over here on the fence, and that's going to be okay. So we've got a, 13 minutes left. Um, well, probably about 15 minutes left in practice. Will we be able to end up with a clean sheet? Again, we could just lock out the defense, but I'm, I'm not going to overcomplicate things. I'm going to leave things as is. I'm talking to over here. One of the things I should make sure is that we don't get another yellow card of any kind. Um, let's go ahead and, um, be assertive here, like... You know, calm down, don't draw any fouls or anything like that. We haven't yet, but I want to make sure. If we give up a goal because you didn't tackle someone hard, that's okay. Harkins oh, actually hits the wall. It's not very often you see uh, Harkins hit the ball, hit the wall with his, uh, his foul shots or his free kicks. On the other hand, this does result in a corner for us. Uh, that looks very close to the goal. Bit of a kerfuffle. We do keep it in. Rose does do it. Doherty is going to have a hard time getting around this defense. Interesting camera angle. We don't tend to see this very often. This is a little bit more typical. Doherty and Harkins is going to take a long shot. He does... I think he was attempting to pass there and it got intercepted. Or it could have been a, just a very weak tackle. I'm not sure. We do stay, keep possession. Harkins is going to have it. Sends it over to Moore, who attempts a long kick, but it just gets deflected by a body. But it is going to lead to a corner kick for us. That's the other thing with some of these long shots. They're not necessarily always intended to go in. Um, but if they deflect off a body, they will lead to a corner, which is very dangerous. Um, we're, oh, not going to keep possession of the ball over there. Jacobs is, I think that's what they're strikers. <sighs> we do pull a foul over there. Hopefully not a yellow, just a foul, just a foul. Okay, that's going to be fine. There's our substitute. They're going to have a corner kick here, which we are going to send away. They're going to keep possession, but they're going to be highly pressured. Oh, the pressure is off now. Clark with a million miles away. An easy goal kick for us. Oh! actually going to lead to an offside. It said offside, which I'm surprised about there. How does the guy who kicked it from there get offside? Maybe it was from earlier. I'm not sure. Doherty's going to fail to win this race. Although, good pressure there. No. Okay, Murphy does get knocked out and forced. Hopefully, he can turn on the gas. Doesn't quite beat Reed there. It's a very close call. And they're just going to... They're doing some very, like, 
aggressive forward passing here, but that is full time. 3-0, the B team with no sharpness comes in with a, a dominating victory, clean sheet. Uh, I'm going to be passionate about this, like good work out of there. Like that was really, really well done. Very impressive. I did not expect that. Actually, it was very prepared for a loss. Um, and I believe, I was going to say, that will secure a playoff spot. We are, it is literally impossible for us to not make the playoffs at this point. Um, very, very, very excited about that. McGuffey, top of the pops. Top of the pops? I don't know. Uh, scored his first senior goal for e e Air playing against, oh, Inverness. This, uh, Inverness, that was a while ago, I think. Yeah, so that's fine. You've got two in there. You did. And an assist, 9.2 rating. This kid here, I'm so happy we realized that we had this guy. I, I, this this is bothering me with the stats going down. We got to get this guy in a full time contract here, um, and I may investigate that between games because I want him um, to uh, practice a lot more. Now, most likely going into the postseason break, the stats are going to decay over the uh, the, the postseason regardless. But when we get him back, maybe we can get him in for some full time training. Um, that would be an excellent addition. So let's take a look at the competitions. Indeed, we're at 55 points. Um, and Dumferlin and Wraith, again, we'd need both of these to come out ahead of us. Um, that's 13 and 14 points differential. We've only got four games left in the season, so the most they can get is 12. So even if they won all four of their remaining games and we lost all of our remaining games, we would still be secure, um, actually in third position. Um, and likewise, with 12 points left on the board, we could... Because we could end up with a total of 67. Um, which actually is quite interesting. Because if Falkirk wins... It, it, so, with Falkirk winning once, if we won four times, we'd still beat them. Now, most likely they will win at least one time. They might win twice and then it becomes impossible. And we would have to have a perfect run of four wins. Although, if they don't win at all, then we only need three wins. We could still conceivably end up in second place. But I don't think it's practical to think that. And I think our plan right now of trying to rotate in people, hey, rotate, I remember that word, uh, rotate in people to get their sharpness up so we have the full depth of our squad available for the playoffs is probably the best move. Yeah, I think so. So I'm actually really happy we made this decision. Um, I mean, it's easy to be happy when you've won, but I think it is the right way to go. It is going to take them a few games to get up to the maxed out um, sharpness. Like, and, you know, if they can at least end up being uh, at 80%. That means they're going to be relatively ready to take up the slack um, in the wings. So that will be quite nice. And uh, yeah, All right, the Michael Rose, one, one start, one sub, and it's worked out well for him, um, surprisingly well. Yeah, he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to be an all-star player over here. We'll see how it goes. I do have him set to not wanted or not needed, um, which I think is fine. On the other hand, what's his salary? Was it 150? 180. And he's relatively cheap, which is good because our budget's not fantastic. Um, now, I am under our wage budget all the time. Although next season it is going to go up a fair bit. Uh, but I'm hoping with our performance that we might get some more money. The club finances, I mean, the club is a half a million pounds in debt. Which is, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, not entirely ideal. But I'm not going to say, like, it's not me mismanaging our budget, I feel. I feel like it's, you know, I don't know, the gate tickets aren't there. Gate receipts, 25 grand. Uh, income, fundraising, grants, merchandise. Merchandising's not very high here. Um, I mean, we might, it would suck if we were forced to sell off some players. It would really be quite bad. Is there a view here? Uh, I guess contract over here with the wages. I mean, 625 is the most expensive we've got. Why Why is Gary Harkin's squad status set to backup? And does that matter? I mean, it doesn't make any sense in any way whatsoever. Um, you're clearly, like, you're clearly a key player, in fact. I mean, I should put you in a first team. Doesn't even have his picture. It's a damn shame. Can't believe it. His glorious bald head and beard. Um... Uh, actually, what would be handy as a new column here for appearances? Where would that be? Appearances. Right? So, well, Ricky Lamb, I was going to say, oh, there's someone here without many appearances for their w wages. Um, who is this? Peter Murphy. 
Yeah, reacted well. We gave him some starts. He's flagged to not want. He's someone who's a little bit more expensive, and we haven't been playing him that frequently. Uh, unfortunately, his value is really low. We're not going to sell him for anything, which is t kind of tragic. So I was like, you know, trying to look into this kind of idea of, is there a discrepancy between someone's pay and how frequently they get played? And not really. We are legitimately, all the people we're paying more on our team, we're playing them all the time. All the time. Well, except technically, you know, Ricky's not playing right now, but this is the end of the season. We're, we're, we're freaking around with some different stuff. So I don't know what we would do to raise money. I mean, I guess what we could consider is, um, oh, wait, that's Jamie Thomas. He's on loan. So Darren Magat has the highest value on our team. Craig Moore is also on loan. Uh, and Ricky, yeah. So it's two defenders over here. Like, could we consider selling Daryl McGat? We might be able to get him considerably more money than this. Could we sell him for 75K? Could we sell him for 100K? And if so, should we? Just to keep the, the club from going bankrupt? I mean, I, as the manager here, I feel like my role is to win games. And it's the board's job to make the money situation happen. But that's not realistic. I mean, first, we'd be able to save a fair amount of money. We've got that. It's not like we don't have a ton of depth on defense, especially if we decide, like, right now, again, we've got um, not wanted on, or not needed on a couple of people here. Peter Murphy, for example, right? Um, with the lowest value. We could, I mean, he's a decent player right now. We could keep using him. He's not as good as Daryl Magat. But, I mean, goddamn, Daryl Magat is number 18. How can I get rid of player number 18? And he is very good. I think, well, in, in a sense, we may have to wait until the next um, the next trading period. Transfer window starts June 7th, which I think is between seasons. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. If we start to get, like, a, if we get a big offer for one of the players, we may not transfer list them. But that doesn't mean someone couldn't approach us with a giant offer for someone. And we, may, we will have to seriously consider it if we get a big money offer for some of our players. And then we might see if we can't pick up someone cheaper somewhere else. Um, it might be a good idea if we do get a big money offer for one of our players to invest in a higher priced scout. Um, now, when we put the job listing, I, I don't know if we always get the highest quality. We actually, I don't know if there's a way to scout for a coach. It says players. Is there a way to scout like... Scouts, because that's what I want to do, is I would want to check their um, their skill versus how much they get paid and maybe poach a few that way, because that would be quite good. Also, if we actually had better coaches, that would help develop things. But that's all, it's all money. It's all money. Sports science um, people, I think, uh, helps to prevent injuries. May also help with some of the development as well, but I think that's one of the things that helps prevent injuries, which is quite good. Um, I mean, we are we are fine. We are sort of middle of the ground um, here. We are um, maybe slightly above average for knowing ability. Um, maybe slightly below. Wait. What is the bar? Oh, the bar is average. Okay. All right, the line is average, and the actual colored bar is where we are. Okay, so we're the best in the league for judging ability. So actually, our scouting is pretty good, and actually pretty damn good for judging potential as well compared to the current league. Uh, we are right in the middle for our physio, right? We have a really good mental coach, really good goalkeeping coach. Um, we're uh, yeah, right smack in the middle for fitness and above average for so, yeah, No, no, our, 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 our staff is better than average. In every way. There's not a single area that we're below average. Most areas were well above average, and some of them we lead the league. So, no, spending more money on staff is probably not what we need to do. See, I'm already thinking about the next season now. The first goal was, like, try not to get relegated, right? That was our very first goal, was try not to fall into automatic relegation, because we started, like, the media predicted as 10th. Then we made a few changes they predicted as 9th. Then the question was, could we avoid the relegation battle? and end up sort of mid-table here. And then it became, oh, it's a miracle. We might actually have a chance of making the playoffs. And then it became, well, we're locked in the playoffs and doing fantastically well. We've exceeded so many expectations going into this. But will we just go bankrupt? <laughs> Ruin the club. We're going to, like, win the battle and lose the war. Could happen. Thanks for watching. See you next time.